Hello, this is Sean Budden, Applications Engineer with Vector Graphics. Today we're going to create a simple structure in Autodesk AutoCAD Plant 3D. Let's get started. The first thing that we'll need to do is add a drawing to the Plant 3D drawing folder. So we'll go over here, we'll find the Plant 3D drawings area, and we'll right click on it. We'll choose New Drawing and then we'll give that drawing a name. We'll go ahead and call this one Basic Structure. And then we'll go ahead and OK that. Now you can see what appears is a regular AutoCAD screen and before we can move on we really need to create some appropriate layers for the drawing. We'll start off by starting um, our new layers we'll go ahead to the layer properties up here and then we'll create some new layers first one we'll create is called grid pattern this is where we're going to place the pattern for the uh, structure that we're going to build we'll create another one called uh, members we'll actually put the structural members in this layer going to open this up just a little bit wider so that we can see what we're doing here. We will create another layer and we're going to call that one railings so we can put railings around the project. Of course since we'll have multiple levels we'll need stairs to get there so we will put stairs in. And every plant structure usually has ladders of some sort as well. So we'll go ahead and we'll put that in. And you can't walk around unless you have a platform to walk on, so we'll go ahead and put in some grading. There we go. Now that looks pretty good. Now we probably want to change some of our colors up, so kind of we'll go ahead and make that real recognizable by making the pattern red. Of course you can make these any colors that you want. I'll give a color to the members railings probably need to be easily seen as well so we'll make those yellow go ahead and give our stairs the same color we wouldn't want anybody to trip and uh, let's go ahead and make these ladders orange and we'll leave our grading to be gray okay that looks good we're gonna go ahead and put that layer property manager I'm gonna go ahead and close it out so that we have more room for drawing okay great now we're ready to do our structure we're gonna start with the grid tool so if you look under the structure tab and you find the tool that says grid I've already kinda of, gonna call this a substation let's take a look at what values you have to put in I'm gonna make sure that I'm on the world coordinate system here and then we have our axis values. This is going to tell what direction the length is in each direction. So first we have our starting point and then how far we're going to go with the X and the Y axis. Uh, I've put 50 feet by 50 feet in here which is going to give its dimensions. The row value that's going to be for my reinforcement structures I have it every 25 feet so you can see I have it at 0, 25 feet and at 50 feet. We're going to make this a uh, total of 20 feet tall, so the first platform is going to be at 10 feet, and then our next platform is going to be all the way at 20 feet. After I check all that out, I'm pretty sure that I like it the way it is, so I'm going to go ahead and create that. Now, if you notice, it's not coming out the color that I'd selected, so I'm going to move this over to the layer that I want by selecting my grid pattern and I'm going to use my drop down here for the layers and I'm going to make sure I put that on the grid pattern layer so now I have the pattern for my um, for my structure so now we can add some structural members to here we're going to stay in the structure tab and we're going to find the tool that says member but before we do that we need to change our layer to the member layer so we can keep track of all this we'll go ahead and select member and then we'll pick our settings we're going to be fooling with steel beams first so let's go ahead and choose that right now I have a W beam selected I have the size and the shape selected here and this dot is going to tell where it attaches to your pattern at 
I want to go ahead and have uh, the ones for the top attach at the top right here and I'll just go ahead and OK that right there and then when I go here to actually place it onto the grid I'm going to choose member and I'm going to I want to make sure that I'm selecting by the endpoint. I want to use my object snaps. So I'll hold down shift and right click and I'll pick endpoint. And I'll go from there to there. Now you can see a preview of the beam that I've picked. Okay? And you can see where it's also uh, attached. Now if I want to move that, I can select that beam. And I can go to Structure Edit. I can change the dot where it's placed. See, I'm going to place it on the corner right there. And now I've moved the beam over. So if you need to position them in, even after you've placed them, it's a simple way to do it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place some more members onto my structure. And it is actually that easy to place the structural members into your, um, into your pattern. Just find where you want to do it, and then you can go ahead and attach them by the O snaps. All right, as you can see, I've added a few more members to our model here. And, uh, but there is one in the back that I do need to add, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. But I'm also going to show you a little trick while we're right here might make things a little bit easier if you go up here into the structure tab and under the tool that says shape model if you switch this to a line model temporarily it's a little bit easier to get that member in there so we're gonna go ahead choose the member I'll use my uh, midpoints right here to get that beam right in there about where we need it I can kinda zoom in and I, maybe you can see the little piece of that uh, eye beam right there looks to be in the place where I want it I'll go ahead and enter that information and then I'll switch back to my uh, shape model and you can see it's just where we want it. Alright, great. Now that we have members in place we need to do some trimming. Some of the first trimming we can do is some standard mitering. If you go up here into the cutting panel, we're still in the structure tab, we're going to the panel that says cutting and this icon right here is going to take us to a mitering tool. So if we go ahead and we press on this little part right here, we can uh, put two members together using a miter joint. It also has a feature that you can use for a gap if you want, but we're just going to keep it simple for right now. We're going to go ahead and choose that tool. And we're going to select the two pieces that we want to miter. I'm going to go ahead and start off with that member. And that member right there. And as you can see, it's now mitered in the place. We'll go around here. And we'll miter those. Notice the tool stays active till you actually stop it. Great. And you can see those beams are mitered. Now let's go ahead and we're going to use the cutoff tool. We'll go ahead and we're going to cut back the beams to where they stop where another beam starts. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We'll go ahead and select the cutback member. And if you see down here, it tells us to select the limiting member. So we're going to go ahead and select this top beam as the limiting member. Let me pull this in so you can see the effect. And then we'll select here, and now you can see where it's cut off at. Okay, so if we go here, select a limiting member, and we select the one that we want to cut and that works pretty quickly limiting member and the one that you want to cut alright very good so that's basically how you get things cut into size for you okay now what we need to do is add ourselves a little plate on here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch over to the to our plating or our grading and we're gonna to go to where 
plate is. But before we do that, we're going to switch back to a line model. Once again, it makes it just a little bit easier to snap to it. Go ahead and position this, uh, take a little isometric view of this so we can see where we're going with it. And now we're going to select the plating tool. We're going to, you have a choice here of grading or plate. We'll go ahead and stick with plate right there. You have a material standards that you can choose from. I'm going to leave it in ASTM and the material code I'll leave at A242. I'm going to change the thickness. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make this a one inch plate. And the justification for the plate. I'm going to go ahead and justify it to the bottom so that's where it's going to attach. It'll attach the bottom of the plate. And for our shape, we're going to create a new rectangular shape here. So I'm going to do that, hit create, and it's created much like you would create a rectangle in AutoCAD. We'll pick one endpoint and we'll go ahead and we'll select our other corner. You can see where it's giving you the preview of that it's put it in. If we take our line model and switch it over to shape model, you can see where your plating is and it fits on there just like that alright so uh, don't forget you could use an existing polyline that could be any shape that you've created with the polyline or you could actually create a new polyline as you're going on here to uh, create your plating well that's all there is to creating a basic structure if you have any questions about plant 3d or any other autodesk manufacturing software please contact us at vector graphics we'll be more than happy to set up an appointment and come out to you and assist you with your needs thanks for watching